Hi, so originally I was thinking that I was going to do this video in the style of a silent film where it would be me doing some stuff with thrilling music in the background and it'd be all black and white and sped up and then it would have cards flash up which would have text on them saying my thoughts. But then I remembered that I'm sick and also Kiki's delivery service and cozy fantasy in general just feels like such a lazy genre that eh, it's not worth the effort. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. Okay, I don't want to come across as too harsh there, because Kiki's Delivery Service, I think, is fine. I, I don't think that this particular book is lazy, but I am going to rant about cozy fantasy as a genre for a little bit, because it's terrible, and I hate it, and I hate that it's becoming popular. But Kiki's Delivery Service... A lot of you might know this because of the Studio Ghibli movie, which came out a long time ago. I watched this movie once when I was six, maybe seven years old, so it's been more than 20 years. I don't remember that much about it. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I remember it being fine. Like, it it, it exists. It's, it's okay, I, I guess. And I feel similarly about the book, although the book definitely is quite a bit different than the movie. What's it about? A girl named Kiki, who is a witch, uh, is about to turn 13 years old, and when witches turn 13, they go off on their own and try to make it in the world as witches, and then she just ha lives a new life in a new town because she can fly on a broomstick, she can deliver stuff for people and do them favors, and then she just, she, she just lives like that. And I know it sounds like I'm leaving stuff out or oversimplifying, but I'm really not. There's not a whole lot to this book. It's just a series of small adventures, misadventures, I guess you'd say. And I think some of them are cute. Like, she has a talking cat with her as well, whose name is Gigi. And there's a whole sequence where she has to uh, have Gigi pretend to be a stuffed animal so that she can go and get a replacement stuffed animal for someone. Uh, like, that. that's a cute, kind of cute, kind of funny moment. And, you know, this is also... A kids book so I don't expect it to ha have a whole lot of super dark or grim stuff exactly but there's not really a conflict here Disappointed! conflict in stories doesn't mean that there has to be an epic battle to save the world it just means that there has to be something that the protagonist is working against you know the the classic way of looking at this is like, okay, man versus man, man versus nature, man versus society, man versus self, you know, things like that. And so you would think that the story is really about Kiki's struggle to, you know, grow up and find herself and be a good witch and everything, but she doesn't really struggle with that. You know, again, it's just a series of small adventures that she runs into. And again, they aren't bad necessarily, like, they're fine. I think a lot of them are kind of cute. But there's not really a conflict here, so I'm not sure what the point is, because if there's no conflict, there's no real story. And I, I don't want to talk too much about the movie, because number one, again, I haven't watched it in over 20 years, and number two, I'm not here to talk about the movie, I'm here to talk about the book, that was what was requested of me. But I do remember the movie having actual conflict. I do remember there was a bit where Kiki started losing her powers, and I remember at the end she had to rescue someone on her broom because they were hanging off a tall building and were about to fall to their death and she had to rescue them. Like, that's conflict. That, that is a conflict. That is the characters trying to do something and overcoming struggles and obstacles in order to achieve their goal. That's not really a thing in the book here. And it's obviously translated from Japanese as well, which... I haven't read a whole lot of books translated from Japanese, but from what I understand they tend to write a lot less detail than we usually do in English. Like, if you were to write a book the way we write in English in Japanese, it would come across as purple prose. And so Kiki's Delivery Service, the book, just doesn't have much detail in it, which does make the book uh, short, which is kind of nice. It flies by quickly. Uh, I think I would have been more annoyed with the fact that there's no conflict if it dragged on for twice as long. But also... I don't know, some people might be bothered by that. I, I th felt that the lack of detail did allow my imagination to fill in the gaps, although granted, again, I was kind of 
filling in character designs and stuff with like Studio Ghibli looking uh, character designs. So maybe that's just me, but I was kind of happy to let my imagination fill in the gaps. So the the way it was written didn't really bother me, but I can see how it would bother other people as well. And that's about all I have to say about Kiki's delivery service. They're just, I don't know, I just don't have much to add. Like, it's kind of cute. It doesn't do anything spectacularly wrong. It doesn't do anything spectacularly well either. It felt kind of nice when I was done with it, and there wasn't much real conflict, so I doubt I'll remember it or get that attached to it in the future. Would I recommend it? Not really, but like, as far as kids' fantasy books go, it this might be a good one for them to read. But I just want to rant for a minute about the phenomenon known as cozy fantasy. Because people have been trying to get me to read this for a couple of years now. It's been getting a bit more popular in the past few years. This is stuff like uh, Bookshops and Bone Dust, or Legends and Lattes, I think is what the first book is called. Bookshops and Bone Dust is the sequel. Whatever, not important. Th that's a fantasy story about someone opening a coffee shop, which... I mean, okay, I'm, I'm not going to tell you that you can't write that or that you can't enjoy something like that, but that's also not really what I come to fantasy for. You know, and from what I hear, that particular book does at least have some conflict with the protagonist struggling to open their coffee shop, that's fine. But most cozy fantasy that I've ever seen or heard anything about, there isn't conflict. It's just characters existing in a world where there's magic and stuff. And I'm gonna be honest, that's really stupid. That is really stupid. Again, I said earlier, if there's no conflict, there's no real story. So what's the point? Why, why are any of us even here if that's what you're gonna be doing? I'm gonna be honest with you. If you're really into cozy fantasy, I don't think you have a healthy relationship with the media you consume. And I know that seems like I'm reaching a bit or that I'm being uncharitable, but that really is how I feel. I feel like the, the fact that cozy fantasy is starting to get big makes me feel like people just cannot handle any sort of adversity like, not in real life and not in their fiction. Like, they can't... I'm not, Again, I'm not saying there has to be an epic battle to save the world. I'm not saying fantasy has to be dark and have a lot of murder and rape in it, because, you know, not all of it has that. Like, some fantasy is better dark, some is better, more lighthearted. But uh, the fact that cozy fantasy just has nothing to get attached to, like, wh what's even the point? It's like the literary equivalent of slice-of-life anime, you ever watch that crap? I have, unfortunately. It is largely just people existing. You know, they're, they're not struggling with anything. They, they just exist. They're, there's nothing interesting to get into. There's no interesting characterization or character development. There's not any interesting world building or action. There's not, again, there's not a conflict or plot of any sort. Occasionally, they'll have decent comedy, but... I mean, if it was actually focused on that, it would be called comedy rather than slice of life, and cozy fantasy seems to be largely the same. So what's even the point? And the point seems to just be existing around some characters and pretending that you have a bunch of friends and stuff that are in this same situation. I, I, I honestly don't know. Like, this is a genre where I can't even begin to understand the appeal because people are going into it with such an alien mindset. And not in an interesting way, just an alien mindset in a boring way that I don't even really want to stop and think about it. And maybe I feel harshly towards cozy fantasy, and again, I don't want to seem like I'm attacking Kiki's delivery service too much because I don't think Kiki's delivery service is really doing anything wrong. That's a kid's fantasy book from 35 years ago, or more than 35 years ago. It's, like, it's fine for what it is. I just don't like that it's, it seems to be inspiring uh, a new generation of stuff which is not trying to be for kids, it's trying to be for adults that, again, just can't handle anything resembling adversity. And, again, I don't think you have a healthy relationship with the media you consume if that's how you're approaching it. And. Maybe I am feeling more harshly towards cozy fantasy because we're already starting to see the fantasy genre get overtaken by romanticy. 
or fantasy romance, whatever you want to call that, which is very blatantly just not fantasy. This is stuff like uh, Fourth Wing and A Court of Thorns and Roses. It, it's just porn with a fantasy backdrop, which, if that's what you're into, fine. I just don't like that people are pretending that it's real fantasy and pretending like I have to take it seriously as a critic and letting it clog up bookshelves and bestseller lists and choke out all other good fantasy. Like, it, it's like kudzu. You know, it's just choking out all the other plant life in the area. And I am worrying that cozy fantasy is going to start doing the same thing. Except, I might dislike cozy fantasy even more. Because at least Fourth Wing <coughs> pretended to have conflict. You know, it, it didn't, but it pretended to have conflict. Throne of Glass became porn partway through, but there were characters with, like, personalities in there. They weren't likable characters with likable personalities, but they were characters. So, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I hate cozy fantasy, and I wanted to take this opportunity to complain about it for a bit. Kiki's delivery service was okay, though. So, I don't know. Do, do with that what you will. My throat hurts, and I can't talk any, anymore. Uh, maybe one day I'll go more in-depth on this, but... Uh, have a lovely day. Uh, like the video, comment, subscribe, check out my merchandise below, all that stuff. Ha have a lovely day. Goodbye. Hello there. This is the end of the video, which means all the patron names are going to be here on screen. My $10 and up patrons are Arthur D. Gonzalez Martin, Brother Santodis, Carolina Clay, Ich Bin Longweilig, Kiana Arms, Lexi Delorme, Liza Rudakova, Lord Tiebreaker, Michael and Katie Hake, Mr. A5013, Proscriptions of Duo Jang, Rovi, Psych XS, Slumbering Jellyfish, Observing Outer Space, Tesla Shark, Toa Michael, Vevictus, and Wesley. All these people, all the other names, you're all great. Also, shout out to my YouTube channel members who aren't here, but they also get access to things like early access to videos, they get one exclusive video a month, you know, that sort of stuff. It's great. If you feel like doing that, either join Patreon or join the channel, or just like the video, comment, subscribe to my channel, share it around, make sure it gets to people. Uh, I also have merchandise available, so check some of that out if you're curious. Uh, don't have anything else to add, but you know, you're all still watching, so I may as well keep talking. Have a lovely day. Goodbye.